Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bell keeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. Speak again the immortal tale, Wuthering Heights. Walking in the blinding snow, I could swear I heard a voice in the wind. A high, lonesome voice, lamenting it was lost. The night was treacherous. I was numb with cold and cursed myself for having wandered so far on the moors. The air was like a million icicles pricking my face. It was hard to breathe. I turned and looked back. The snow had already hidden the road behind me. Panic and fear cut through me like a chill knife. I almost ran up the slope ahead. Then I stopped dead still and caught my breath. Against the gray horizon was a house set on a height, a shelter from the storm. I could think of nothing else. I ran toward the house and stumbled up the path to the door. Let me in! Let me in! What do you want? I've, I've lost my way in the storm. I... I beg of you, sir, let me come in. We don't welcome strangers here. But I can't find my way back in the snow. Take the road you came. It's buried in drifts. Please, sir, I beg of you. I I... don't allow a man to inconvenience me if I can hinder it. This night I have no choice. Come in. Uh, I'm indebted to you for my life, sir. No one man could live through that blizzard. Then warm yourself by the fire. It is a bitter night. I'm afraid, sir, that guests are so exceedingly rare at Wuthering Heights, I hardly know how to receive them. My name is Lockwood. I'm staying at the village inn. I had no idea the Moors could lose a man so completely. There are more than men lost on the Moors. Then I'm afraid I shall be weather-bound, unless you can spare me a guide. I'm sorry, I cannot. Are there no boys on your farm? None, sir. Will you take a glass of wine? It would be welcome, indeed. There's no one at Wuthering Heights, save myself, its former master... And Alan Dean, an old nurse. Then how shall I ever get back? Their landmarks. I can point them out to you. I'd be sore afraid to trust the darkness. Then I hope you've learned not to make such rash journeys on the hills. I don't keep accommodations for visitors. But, sir, you, you can't turn me out. I'd be grateful if you'd only allow me to stay here by the fire. No. no there's no need for that. I couldn't permit anyone the range of the place while I'm asleep. Ellen! Will you have some more wine, sir? Then you'll allow me to stay. Till morning. And you can find your way alone. Yes, Mr. Heathcliff. Come in, Ellen, come in. This man is Mr. Lockwood. He's lost his way. We'll let him stay the night here. Yes, sir. Take your glass, sir. Wine helps take the chill from your bones. Light a fire for Mr. Lockwood, Ellen. I will, sir. Good night, then. Good night, Mr. Heathcliff. I'm grateful indeed. This way, sir. Up the stairs. The room was dusty and cold, and I stood for a time on the hearth warming myself. A naked branch of a frozen tree scraped against the window pane. I felt as if there were eyes somewhere in the dark corners of the chilly room, watching and waiting for some sign or hidden word unknown to me. Then I saw those dusty volumes on the window ledge, 
and three names scratched in the wood. Catherine Earnshaw, Catherine Heathcliff, Catherine Linton. One of the books was a musty testament written in a small feminine hand. I sat down on the bed, turning the diary to the candlelight, and began to read. It was Catherine Earnshaw's book. Today's my birthday, she had written. The saddest day of all. Seventeen. Just Just imagine. And how how little did I dream the world could be so full of tears. Let me tell you how the sadness came. Heathcliff and I were on the moors today, laughing and singing all the while, till suddenly night began to creep out of the east. We ran over the hills toward home. I... And the wild slip of a girl you are, Cathy. <laughs> and, Father, there were at least a dozen rabbits in the goose bushes. Think how many we could bring home if you'd only let Heathcliff have a gun. <laughs> Whatever will we do with her, Ellen? I think she means no harm, Mr. Earnshaw. Oh, I'm an old man, Cathy. When I'm gone, it's your brother Hindley who'll be master of Wuthering Heights. Heathcliff, is that you who are sitting so sullen on the house? I'm Mr. Earnshaw. It is only the thought of you being ill that makes me sullen. Come here, my lad. Beside my chair. What a ruffian you are. As wild as the wildest day on the moors. Have you grown fond of Wuthering Heights? I'm Mr. Earnshaw. I have that. Do you recollect when I found you? A dirty imp, frightened and homeless on the Liverpool streets. I was so little, sir. I remember a little, too. Well, I recollect when I brought you home from the chore you were, snarling and clawing like a little beast. Now you're a big lad. And I'm thinking it's the truth, Ellen tells me. You're very much fond of our Cathy. We understand one another, sir. Our natures are akin. Aye, Father, they are. Like two peas in a pod, I'm thinking. <laughs> well, it is good. It is a curious world I'm leaving, but for a better one. Hey, Ellen. Oh, sir. Hey, for a better one. Sing me a little tune, Cathy. Sing your old father to sleep. Put your head back like a good man. There. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why, he's asleep already. You wake him. And don't any of you stir to bed with all of you. No din, do you hear? But I could kiss him good night at least. That'll not wake him. Hindley. Ellen. He's dead, Heathcliff. He's dead. <laughs> Just true, Kathy. Your father's passed over at last. Heathcliff cried tonight till I thought his heart would break. And now my brother Hindley says he's not to eat a table with us anymore. That Heathcliff and I shan't walk on the moors again. And he threatens to turn him out of the house if we break his orders. For Hindley now asserts his mastery of Wuthering Heights. Oh, poor father, would you hear of such an outrageous thing? But we shall be happy in spite of Hindley. And when the days pass into weeks, we'll both outgrow the sadness. Come on, Cathy. Come on. Heathcliff, wait for me. I can't run over the moors as fast as you. And come on, else I will leave you behind. Well, where are you going? We're so far from home. Never you mind. Curiosity killed a cat, remember? <laughs> oh, you and your silly saying. Yeah. Give me your hand. Oh, let's walk a little. We've been running for hours. Heathcliff. Oh, look at me. Why, you're crying. It's only the wind. No, it's not the wind. Oh, I know. I've seen the hurt in your eyes all these weeks, ever since Father died. It's not hurt, you see, Kathy. I'm trying to settle how I shall pay Hindley back. I don't care how long I wait if I can do it at last. Oh, my darling. Hold me close to you. Can't we just run away somewhere? Far away where nobody will ever harm us. You such a silly, Kathy. Do you really love me so much? 
More than you'll ever know. More than I could ever say. Then nothing can harm us. Come on now. It's already getting dark. Is this place, sir, whatever it is, is it very far? Just yonder, at the top of the hill, you'll see. Oh, you're so mean, not teasing me. <laughs> Making me wait like this. Well, you don't have to wait longer. Look. There. The wall about it. It's a house. Oh, a beautiful house. Whoever lives in it, Heathcliff? The Lintons. Then it's Thrushcross Grange. Mm. See that window with the flowers just underneath? Yes. That's the drawing room. We can sit there and look in on the Lintons and watch what they do on a Sunday. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> look now. Your tears are gone. Oh, but it's beautiful, Heathcliff. It really is beautiful. Not so loud, Kathy. They'll hear. Oh, look, there's Isabella and Edgar. <laughs> Aren't they silly looking? Right. All done up in their satins and lace, looking as if they could die with boredom. Aye. And I wouldn't chain places with Edgar even if the privilege of painting Wuthering Heights with Hindley's blood came with it. Edgar, look! There's a way to window! She saw you, Come on! Come on, we'll have to run for it. The Heathcliff, wait! The dog, they've set the dog loose! Come on, we can beat him to the morgue! Edgar, let me go! Get him, Skulker! Get him! Heathcliff, run! The dog! Let her go! Let her go! Keep close, Skulker. Keep close. Cut off your blasted car. Try to do, Papa. So it is. Skulker, get back there. Get back. The rascals dove that yesterday was your rent day. They'd come to murder us. Shut up, both of you. Skulker, get back there. Stay back. Hey. Yeah, you're all right. My ankle. My ankle's torn. Let me see, Miss Earnshaw. No. It is a bad bite. <laughs> Miss Earnshaw. Catherine Earnshaw. Oh, nonsense. And Earnshaw scouring the moors with a gypsy. Edgar, take her up and into the house. We'll have to dress the wound. You. Who are you? None of your business, Mr. Lenton. And you'll not lay a hand on her. Why, you insolent rogue. Think... I'll take you home. No. No, Heathcliff. I... I can't walk. Heathcliff, is it? Well, so you're the lad my late neighbor adopted. Oh, he's a frightful thing, Papa. Unfit for a decent house. Aye, and that's the truth. Now get going, lad. And tell Miss Earnshaw's brother we'll keep her here till she's able to come home. Do as he says, Heathcliff. Please. You heard what Miss Earnshaw said. Get a move on. Kathy, I'll come back. Goodbye. I'll fetch you home when you're well again. I watched him climb over the wall and disappear in the cover of twilight. The Lindens nursed me, and oh, how different life was at the Grange. But Heathcliff wasn't there. It was... It was somehow incomplete, even though Edgar and Isabella with their laughter made the days pass quickly. When Christmas came, I was well again, and happy to see Wuthering Heights from the window of the Linton carriage. Heathcliff! Heathcliff, I'm home! Oh, oh, hello, Ellen. Where's everybody? Oh, Miss Cathy. Such a lady you've grown up to be. <laughs> oh, and such a beautiful girl. Do you like it, Ellen? It's one of Isabella's. What'll Heathcliff say of me now? Oh, his eyes will pop out of his head. Oh, Ellen, really, I did have a wonderful time. But where's Hindley, and um, why isn't Heathcliff here to meet me? Your brother's out on the moors, and Heathcliff... Uh, Miss Cathy... Heathcliff's gone. Gone? Gone from Wuthering Heights? Ever since that day Mr. Edgar came here to ask your brother for your hand in marriage, he's deserted me. Heathcliff's deserted me. No, Miss Cathy. It's Hindley. He made him come. No, no, Miss Cathy. Heathcliff went out of his own accord. But why didn't he wait till I could explain? Couldn't he see that if I married, I'd have money to help him find his place in the world? Oh, Ellen. My grief has been Heathcliff's as well. My love, his love. He's always, always in my mind. I... I am Heathcliff, Ellen. Don't you see... He must come back. He must come back. Weeks and months passed. I waited and hoped. He didn't come back. Then one summer day, after old Mr. Linton died, Edgar and I were married, and Ellen came to live at the Grange. One night, Edgar and I were sitting with Isabella in the parlor when Ellen came in. Yes, Ellen. What is it? Oh, Miss Cathy, there's a man from the valley to see you. Why, she's white as a sheet. <laughs> well, did he frighten you, Ellen? No, ma'am, it's just that I... Well, speak up, Ellen. 
Who is he? Oh, it's Heathcliff, sir. Heathcliff, come back. Ellen, it isn't true. Oh, Edgar, Heathcliff, come back. He's come back. Oh, look, do get him. Step up, Ellen, quickly. Oh, really, Catherine? Oh, I, I know you didn't like him, Edgar, but for my sake, be friends with him now. Why, he's nothing more than a runaway servant, Catherine. Oh, I know what you think, Isabella, but y you like him when you know him better, really. Believe me. Mr. Heathcliff, in here, sir. Oh, Heathcliff. Oh, Heathcliff, you've come back at last. Welcome to the Grange. Kathy. And a more beautiful Kathy than never was. I shall think it a dream tomorrow. Uh, do you remember Edgar and Isabella Heathcliff? How do you do? Yes, How do you do? do? Where are you staying, sir? At Gimmerton? No, no. At Wuthering Heights. Kathy's brother, Hindley, invited me when I called this morning. Oh, it's so wonderful to have you home. I thought we might have walks together someday soon, Kathy. And see the moors again. But of course we shall go walking. Now that summer's here and... Uh, and now that you're here again... Perhaps Mr. Heathcliff will also show us the darkest and most dangerous corners of the moors. I'm afraid I'm as ignorant of them as Edgar is. And the pleasure will be all mine, Mrs. The world was right again, and my heart sang. Heathcliff was home, a tall, splendid man. But behind his dark eyes was the boy I'd known before. We walked on the hills, we laughed, and oh, I was happy again. But as the days passed, Isabella grew cross and fretful. And I knew she'd fallen in love. It's only your harshness, Kathy, that makes me unhappy. But how can you say that, Isabella? When have I ever been harsh with you? Yesterday. And now? Yesterday? When? And I'll walk on the moor. You told me to ramble where I pleased while you went along with Mr. Heathcliff. Well, is that your notion of harshness? I really didn't care whether you worked with us or not. You didn't want me, Kathy, because you knew I liked being there. With Heathcliff, you mean? Yes. But you want nobody to be loved except yourself. Isabella. Well, you don't believe that. I love him more than ever you could. And Heathcliff might love me too if you'd only let him. Oh. I wouldn't be you for a kingdom then. Do you know what Heathcliff is? He's a rogue. Wild and cruel and strong. He stops at nothing. And you know what he's doing now, this minute? He's doing what he always swore to do. Ruin Hindley Earnshaw. I don't believe you. You're selfish. You're jealous of me. Here, here. What's going on between you two? I love him. You hear that, Edgar? And I don't care if you do know it. I love Heathcliff more than Catherine ever loved you. Isabella, stop it. You don't know what you're saying. I know what I'm saying well enough. You're both against me. Isabella, stop this hysterical talk and go to your room. <laughs> All right, Edgar. I'll go. But what will you think when I say it's the last order I'll take from the master of Thrushcross Range? Kathy, what on earth is the matter? What does she mean? I don't know, Edgar. I don't know. Well, I do. It's that Heathcliff. He's poisoned her mind. Edgar, don't talk. Call Ellen. I... I feel ill. But Kathy... Edgar, let's hear no more about it. Edgar, I, I can scarcely stand. Kathy. Ellen, come quickly. Miss Kathy has fainted. Oh, Miss Cathy, do come away from the window. We used to stand among the graves at Gimmerton Kirk, Heathcliff and I, and dare the ghost to rise up out of the solid ground. I dare you now, Heathcliff, to come for me. I'll not rest till you're here. Miss Cathy, the doctor said you should be in bed. Oh, Ellen, what'll I do? There's a ghost inside me. This room's a haunted place. I'm afraid of being alone. There, there, Miss Cathy. Come to bed. Look, see how weak you are? In a little while, you'll be well and strong again. Now, cover up. Good and warm. Cathy, it's happened. You've driven her away. Isabella's run off with Heathcliff. Listen to that wind, Ellen. Has winter come so soon? Hi, Miss Cathy. You've been in bed a long time, remember. Will I ever be well again? Now, how could you help it when you've got a, as good a nurse as I? If I tell you something, Miss Cathy, will you promise to lie quite still and not become excited? Ellen, you've heard. Now, now, I promise. Oh, first. yes, I promise, I promise. Well, three days ago, I received a note from Miss Isabella. 
Oh, it made my heart weak to read it. They've returned to Wuthering Heights, and she's unhappy and afraid. Heathcliff doesn't love her, she says. Oh, he married only for spite. Does Edgar know all this? No, no, Miss Cathy, and he mustn't since he's disowned his sister. Somehow, I knew Heathcliff was back at the Heights. I could feel he was there. Yes, I saw him today. Today? Oh, Ellen. He wants to see you. <laughs> he wants to see me, Ellen. That's the most important thing in the world. He wants to see me again. Oh, but please, Miss Cathy, for your own sake, don't. No good can come of it, believe me. He's a man without a soul. And poor Hindley. Heathcliff's made a gambler and a drunkard out of him. He's taken Wuthering Heights for his very Will Heathcliff come tonight, Ellen? What time? How will I know? Look at me, how thin and how ugly I am. Oh, you were never more beautiful, Miss Cathy. Are you so bent on seeing me? Yes, you? yes, I must. Well, he'll come to the garden tonight after ten o'clock. Ten o'clock? Oh, there's so little time, Ellen. Help me out of bed. I must get ready to see him. But he's coming here. He knows you're ill. <laughs> but I'm not ill any longer. You'll see how well I am when I walk down to the garden to meet him. And now he's coming to the garden. I knew you'd come back, Heathcliff, someday. Back to me. What matter is anything now? Except that you're coming to the garden to see me again. But I must close my book and put it away before the clock strikes ten. Silly words I have written. What do they mean? There was never a way of telling what's in my heart. The diary ended, and I closed the book. The gloomy room had grown chill again, for the fire had burned itself out. And over Wuthering Heights, the wind of the blizzard sang... I pulled down the covers of the bed. The frozen branch of the tree scraped on the window glass. I went to the window and pulled it up. A cold wind dashed in upon me. I reached out, groping for the twig. Then my blood froze. Instead of the branch, my fingers closed over a small, ice-cold hand. I tried to draw back my arm, but the hand clung to it. And a voice came out of the wind... What is the matter? A hand on the sill and a voice entreating me to let her in. Mr. Heathcliff, it's your Catherine out on the moors. Are you mad? She's been dead 20 years. Then she's come back from the grave. I tell you, I touched her hand. What is this din in the night, Mr. Heathcliff? What's happened? Cathy, on the moors. I must find her. I must bring her back. Mr. Heathcliff, wait a moment. Stop him, Mr. Lockwood. Don't let him go. He'll not stay out in the blizzard long. Never fear. But, Ellen, tell me the rest of the story. What happened that night when Heathcliff called at the Grange? You've been reading her diary then? So long ago it was, Mr. Lockwood, that unhappy night. But tell me. Well, I begged Miss Cathy not to move from her bed. But her eyes shone. There was no stopping her. Heathcliff was waiting in the garden at the stroke of ten, and I opened the side door for Miss Cathy to go out in the winter air. They looked at each other without saying a word. A gust of icy wind blew up. I was afraid for Kathy. I shot it to her. Miss Kathy, you must come inside. You're not well. I don't care, Ellen. Let me stay. Kathy, she's right. You must go. The wind's cold. I'll wait by your window. No, 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 Heathcliff. I want to stay here. Miss Kathy, please. I'll never go. Never again. When I'm dead, Heathcliff, will you forsake me? Kathy, don't speak of dying. Kathy. Miss Kathy. Oh, bring her in, sir. She's fainted. I'll never forsake you, Kathy. No, Ellen. She's not fainted. Call Edgar. Tell him Kathy is dead. So we buried her on the moors in a lonesome spot where she'd often wandered. And Mr. Heathcliff came back to the heights. And so the years have passed. 
Now, sir, you know, and I can wait no longer. Please go with me to fetch him out of the storm. But, Miss Isabella, what happened to her? Oh, she went back to the Grange soon after Miss Cathy died. And Hindley? He's still here at the Heights, though he seldom comes out of his room. Will you go with me now, sir? Uh, yes, Ellen. Lead the way. The snow is beginning to stop, sir. We've wandered so far from the Heights, Ellen. We'd better go back. Oh, but the dawn is coming. The spot I mentioned is just ahead... Look, there on the slope. It's a cross. There's something half buried in the drifts. Miss Cathy's grave, Mr. Lockwood. But what's that lying over it? Oh, he didn't know where else to look on the moors except in the spot where she lies. Then it's Heathcliff, frozen in the snow. Aye, Mr. Lockwood. Come. We can go back to the heights. He's found her at last. As we trudged back to Wuthering Heights, the snow slackened, and there was nothing but the bleak house there on the hill, and beyond it, a wide and gloomy sky. As we approached the gate, I looked up and saw two birds taking flight from one of the eaves, and they flew together through the snow-dusted air, and we stood and watched until they disappeared into the gray horizon of the morning. time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the story, Wuthering Heights. Bellkeeper, toll the bell.